ग good morning sir very nice to talk to you again and uh, hope uh, you are able to see us and hear us yes we we can okay let me let me show you a brief powerpoint presentation of this uh, patient go on a 53 year old gentleman gets a closed mitral commissurotomy for rheumatic mitral stenosis in 1993 that gets restenosed he gets a mitral valve replacement with a 25 mm bioprosthetic valve and he continues to have class 2 dyspnea he has history of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation next slide he has a pan systolic murmur at the apex indicating that there is some persistent mitral leak the ecg currently is in sinus rhythm next slide chest x ray shows marginally larger heart and the echocardiogram shows a normal bioprosthetic function with a 7 into 5 oval mitral paravalvular leak located close to the left atrial appendage with moderate to severe mr there was mild pulmonary hypertension this is the echocardiogram and uh, you can appreciate the mitral prosthesis valve leaflets moving very well and this is the mitral gradient the mitral gradient is marginally increased due to the additional blood flow that is going through the mitral paravalvular leak next so this is the paravalvular leak located laterally next and this is the 3d transesophageal echocardiography what you are seeing in the center is the mitral prosthesis on the left hand side at 10 o'clock is the left atrial appendage anteriorly at around 1 o'clock is uh, the aortic valve and what is shown in the marker is the paravalvular leak now dr srija will show direct live go echo live echo live echo make it big echo make it big yeah what you are seeing on the screen now is the echocardiography recorded images today morning and this is a mitral prosthesis and on putting the color flow the mitral valve flows are normal mitral valve leaflet is normal this is the mitral paravalvular leak it is skirting the mouth of the left atrial appendage on measurement somewhere around 6 to 7 mm and here you can appreciate the left atrial appendage at around 10 to 11 o'clock position and a small arrow pointing down to the mitral paravalvular leak next again again you can see here the mitral paravalvular leak on the 9 o'clock position of the prosthesis so at this time let me show the angiogram i have with me dr ramya uh, who uh, uh, we, we both are doing the procedure and dr srija is uh, at the echocardiography these these procedures are primarily guided by echocardiography especially 3d transesophageal and dr srija is at the echo end as is customary we have done an echo uh, a coronary angiogram and that shows normal coronaries next so the coronary angiogram shows normal coronaries next go to the echo navigation page there so then what we did was i will show you now yeah come to ap view the next step that we were doing was uh, to mark on the echocardiography you i will show you enable my mouse so you can see on the right side of the screen the the uh, fluoroscopy this is echo navigation with the superior vena cava atrial junction mark this is the intraatrial septum mark left atrial appendage mark and the paravalvular leak marked all of them marked on the echocardiography and fluoroscopically uh, like we have put in the dots on the fluoroscopy go live to this uh, this picture here yeah yeah run it first picture first previous so this is the septal puncture as guided by the you can appreciate the position of the intraatrial septum that we have marked so we are on the on the leftward screen we are poking exactly in the same area we entered into the left atrium with a transeptal broken bro needle next and we advanced it deep inside 
And now you can appreciate on this screen, this is the mouth of the left atrial appendage. And you can see the left atrial appendage getting lighted up there. Next. So then we advance the left ventricular catheter. And next picture. Then we did a left ventricular, uh, this is the transeptal uh, sheath that is going in through the guide wire. Next. Which is the sheet? Next picture. Dr. Shiva, which is the sheet? Yeah, this is the edgeless? left ventricular angiogram. Yep. What is the sheet? Is this edgeless sheet the, or what? The, the sh yeah, sheet on the top is edgeless. 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 Senjude yeah. edgeless yeah. 8.5 French sheet. Yeah, this is a yeah. sheet which is commonly and used by uh, the EP guys. Then the EP next guys. was left ventricular angiogram. Next. Yeah, correct. Actually, the, 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 uh, because it is steerable. Uh, and you can appreciate the paravalvular leak here. Next. We actually then went into a projection where the paravalvular leak gets out of the mitral prosthesis. Next picture. So the, the edgely sheath was pointing towards the left atrial appendage because the appendage mouth and the paravalvular leak are pretty close to each other. Next. So uh, we, we tried to play around with the edgeless, but the problem that we had was the edgeless will get advanced to the mouth of the appendage. And if you try to flex it a little bit more so that it comes out of the, mitral, uh, the left atrial appendage, it will pop into the mitral valve itself. And my guide wire was going through the mitral valve. It, Next. May, be, it may be easier to cross this. So uh, we decided to go retrograde. Yeah, it Next. may be easier to so cross from the LV side. Previous. Yeah. Because the flow will direct the wire easily into the yeah, Exactly. LA. Is it Dr. Yeah. K. Abraham? He's always. Yeah, Vijay Trahan. Is it Dr. Abraham? I mean, Dr. Vijay Trahan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Most yeah. of the paravalvular leaks fact, on in, the mitral yeah, side, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. always easy to cross from the left ventricular side. Yeah. In fact, uh, I almost never try yeah. to cross so it from the, the LA side. It is only, it is only when you have a DVR, you have a process on the aortic well also, then of course you can't yeah. go. Then you have to take only the transeptal route. Yeah, exactly. And a lateral uh, PVL is still relatively easy to cross uh, than a medial yeah, one. There, there I use that. Yeah. Correct, correct, exactly. And so now this is the Judkins left catheter that is walking in and by the time we, we put the Judkins left into the left ventricular apex, the guide wire automatically walks through the paravalvular leak. You can see now the paravalvular leak being crossed by the straight thermo guide wire. Yeah. And now, ah, that is a that is a straighter. And then after that, we railroaded it. Next. And if you have to take a Jetkin, so take next. the smallest curve. Like if you have a three curve so on table, it will be better. Yeah. Or sometime if you don't have a yeah. small this curve. Was a, this was a three point five that we took for the coronary angiogram. Yeah. Sometime if you don't have a small curve, then you can take an IMA catheter, which also helps you in taking the wire from LB to LA. Yeah. The second choice for me will be an EBU catheter uh, guide and then I try. Okay, this is the next second. Next. So then we, 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 we snared it and we created an arterial in a circuit. Next. So next, this is the circuit being made. Next. Oh, one very important thing is while you are trying to snare, always have the catheter yeah, across next. the defect because if you just snare the wire, it can tear through the defect and it can, can enlarge the defect. So once you are snaring, the, you, you have yeah. to keep the defect protected by yeah, the catheter. I, I, the, the, the that, that can lead to a cut through effect. Yeah, there were some problems of getting the edge, edgeless sheath getting across the mitral paravalvular leak. So next picture. So we decided to take a shuttle sheath from the arterial side because there was an angulation for the uh, for the paravalvular leak to cross from the atrial side was was a little bit tough for this edgeless sheath. Uh, next picture. Edgeless sheath is a braided sheath and it's a larger profile sheath. Yeah. Probably I think we could have crossed it if we had used a normal Cook Mullin sheath which is much lower in profile. However, since we took the edgeless sheath and edgeless was finding it difficult to cross, we decided to go retrograde. Now this is a shuttle sheath. Next. One another so this is the shuttle sheath across. We are actually kissing each other. Yeah, eight. And eight French shuttle sheets now across the arterial route and 8.5 edgeless across the venous route. Next. So you want to Next. close it retro. Next picture. Yeah, because uh, because the, this edgeless sheath is not easily yeah. crossing through. 
the one more advantage of a retrograde is that I can I can show I can push position the uh, device on a transesophageal echo guidance the left atrial disc. Next, next picture. So let me go live now here. So what we have is I have a transeptal sheath which is snaring my uh, my shuttle sheath. Same. We can appreciate here. And you can also appreciate that there is already a kink in my uh, shuttle sheet. Yeah, so I am trying to get rid of my kink. Yeah, shuttle is kinking. So I am now trying to advance my guide, my device. Device is slowly making its way through. Sometimes it is better to keep a loop of the snare around your... There is a around your shuttle sheath in the LA, just in case it is trying to slip back, you can just catch it. Shiva? I am already doing that. Are you able to appreciate it on the... Are you able to see that? I have already done it. Okay. Actually, that is behind the T probe. Sorry. Take out the T probe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you are able to see it. Yeah. So now... So watch I it that the shuttle sheath is already caught with the snares. Because many times when you are trying to struggle around this kink sheet and you are trying to pass the plug or any device, they, they try to flap back or whip back into the LV. And so you lose an excess. So to prevent losing the excess, keep the tip of the uh, this shuttle sheet snared into the LA. The shuttle, the shuttle is having a sharper kink there yeah, at that's that place. Kink is there. So I am... Yeah. I think that kink is now preventing I pull it. More than this. So now I am correct. Yes, sir. So now I am trying to. There is a limitation of the uh, shuttle's length also. So now yeah. I am almost at the groin with the uh, catheter. Because if the issue about the length was not there, then so sometimes... Now, let me see if I can... So, there is the, the kink is at that place. The place where the device is hitting against the... The, the, the device to the... Uh, now let me try to straighten it out. It's not. Think if I cross that bend, then I'll be through. You'll, yeah, I think you have to straighten it out in your turn rather than LV, and then cross. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually that that one bend I have to make now. Yes. Sometimes this shuttle, I feel, might have lost its integrity at that point. So it's, ex it's exactly hitting at the same point again and again. Either it comes to the left ventricular apex or let me try it at this portion. If it just makes another couple of millimeters, then it will start moving because there is a bend on that sheath at that particular point. Little bit of rotation might okay, help. Okay, so, so now let me... Uh, the thing is, sir, now I have held it with a snare. Yeah. So, not too much of rotation is also permissible. So, what I'll do is now try to straighten it out with a dilator a little bit and see how the dilator manipulates the way through. And have a wire. Put in a guide wire. First cross this area with a wire, the kink with a wire. Put in a... Yeah, they, they, there, is, there is a... Uh, no, no, you will have to first cross with the wire. Uh, I, we, have seen, we have snared the other tip. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm going there. On the dilator state, dilator won't go. Yeah, after the wire, the dilator can go. So now we have placed the. There is a resistance at that point, so I, I feel that it is probably a lot of uh, bend in that area. This is in spite of it being a completely braided shuttle sheath. Usually it is a very, very good sheath, it doesn't kink like this. It's at that point. We can appreciate that. Actually, I'll show you. Mag that area. Mag that. See, we can we, see that the see, braiding yes. has actually you, gone off. Shiva, go, you go to mag. Go to mag. Shiva, yeah, we I, can I, I, appreciate I, that. I, Even without mag, we can appreciate yeah, this. See, trying to struggle more yeah. might might. So what lead, I'm going to do is it might lead to a total fracture of the sheath there. I think uh, we'll have to think something <coughs> different. Take the sheath out. Yeah. I don't so think the sheath I, is any good I'm for doing to, the procedure. No. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to take the sheath out. Yeah. Because yeah. the, so now uh, make mag down, mag it, down. It looks already it has a green stick fracture. It's going to convert to a complete so fracture I'm, and dislocation. I'm going to get. Uh, yeah. So now I'm going to uh, take out the sheath now. And advance a guiding catheter. See the other thing which you can do is once you're guiding catheter. So now I will loosen the snare. I have loosened the snare now. So now I am taking out the whole sheet. I am keeping a loop in the left ventricle. Get me a, a, an 8 French small sheet and an 8 French uh, RCA guide catheter. One way to get the sheet, the, this uh, agile sheath into the LV across the defect will be that you would take the 8 French guiding catheter over this wire into the LA and then take a wire, snare, yeah. snare a wire yeah. into the sheath and then once your wire is snared into the sheath then you advance a balloon over it yeah. and inflate a 4 millimeter balloon into the sheath, part into the sheath and part into the guiding. This will not only catch it from inside both yeah. the sheath as well as the guiding catheter but it will self align also and it will it is something like a balloon assisted tracking which will help you in getting yeah. the sheath across because the snare business is making a sudden sudden angulation are you able to get me shiva yeah and, uh, yeah correct correct actually the, the, the uh, you, yeah 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 actually the that, that that is that is one of the ways of crossing any sort of tortuous yeah. turn so you do a balloon assisted if crossing you have so you can a, do yeah. a low profile balloon initially across and as you are deflating the balloon keep on advancing the sheet so that the sheet spreads over it <coughs> no no what, what i'm saying yeah. is a little different what i'm saying is you inflate right, a balloon right. in the sheet part of the balloon into the sheath and part of the balloon into yeah. your guiding catheter and both close to each other that will form a cylinderized unit which will which can slip in through the defect yeah use a dip Hold it. same sh a new sheath again it might not kink no it's it's first kink it doesn't mean that next also will kink yeah, that is also another option. <coughs> okay. Uh, come here, uh, Ramya. Uh, hold it both together. So easily, see most of the people, once you talk about paraprosthetic leak, the steps which are told are relatively straightforward that you cross with a wire, take a sheath and deliver it. Here you see the nuances that uh, everything is there in front of you. It is in two dimension, but the third dimension is telling you that you are out of plane. And uh, advancement of the gears over a wire may not be all that easy. 
for holding it tight. Yeah. So now what I am doing is I am going ahead with the same. Shiva has holding. a third eye, you know. For holding it. No. Okay. Now. Actually, we lost the guide wire. So oh, I now I am I am trying to go retrograde. This guide catheter is also kinking at that area. Yeah. Okay, come here. Yeah. Can you get me a, a five French guide catheter so that I will first cross and then put an ampla super stiff guide wire and then get this eight French inside? Shrija, just confirm on TE that I am still outside. We have not actually come out of the mitral paravalvular leak, but just reconfirm. Uh, it's always a good idea, uh, very frequently, to keep on, uh, on, on 3D TY. Confirming that you are on the paravalvular leak and not through the valve. Yeah, holding. This you have taken a five French guiding. Yeah, five French guiding. I, I, my plan is to put in an ampla super stiff guide wire and so that I have a little bit more stability. Now I am yeah. in the pul pulmonary vein. Yeah, so now get me an ampla super strip guide wire. One, necess one requisite for doing all this procedure is that you should have a lot of these wires, sheets. Uh, yeah. Now, you, uh, ultimately it might prove out to be a little bit more expensive because of a large number of gadgets that you may be using. So now we have a stiff guide wire across. Again, get me that same eight French guide. Amplets are vascular plug. Uh, keep it ready. Please let it be there. Or we can go for the same, sh you have another shuttle sheet, then I can try uh, uh, Oculotech device itself. So not at cross, we are still across, now we are crossed. So now what we have done is we have crossed with the guide catheter, 8 French guide catheter. Give me that one eight roadrunner wire so that I will keep it as a stiffening wire before I take out before I take out this uh, since previously we we saw that it is getting kinked at the left ventricular apex. I am going to put in your straightening wire now. Shiva, you can snare the wire into your edge list sheet. This is a one eight roadrunner guide wire. S Shiva, you can snare the wire tip which is there in the pulmonary at the moment into, yeah, now I, no, into the I, I, edge, into the edgeless sheath and this time this is a eight french guiding you can take the guiding into the edgeless sheath and then you can advance the edgeless over this guiding that might work snare the uh, snare the wire take now it I into the edgeless stabilizing it here and pull this Guiding no, Dr. Trehan, I am actually planning to close it retrograde okay. so that I can show the device, I can show the device opening out in the left atrium. Okay, 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 okay. That, that is very easily seen in the TE. Uh, uh, 
see. Yeah. Uh, so now uh, I want the uh, amp plugs. Uh, I think a 10 plug should be okay here. Uh, it's a 7 millimeter. Or give me a 12 plug. 12 will be okay. Yeah. 12 plug. I'm choosing. I'm choosing a 12 AVP2. Sometime when we are struggling, we enlarge. Just check whether 12 AVP2 is also. compatible with an 8 French guiding catheter. Yeah, true. Actually, the, and, the uh, manipulations and, uh, yeah, and, and may, may, and en may it may look like it are enlarging, yeah, and, but there's a lot of fibrosis in that area. Uh, and, and that subsequent entries become easier. <laughs> yeah, come, 12, 12 AVP2. I remember the days when uh, Dr. Behel and me, we were working together and uh, we used to enjoy each other. Uh, he will be doing quite a lot of uh, uh, like very high end uh, uh, coronary interventions and uh, I used to watch uh, his procedures. See. And we were basically, we will be sharing our experiences <laughs> on structural and coronary. See, I always feel the structural is more interesting. More Two challenging, years, no, more no, challenging. No. <laughs> Coroner is very predictable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now, now what we have is uh, a yeah, vascular plug that is going in retrograde. So now echo becomes bigger. So actually when we are advancing the AVP2, there are two, three things. Since it's going through the bends, it gets into a little bit of resistance in all these bend, bent areas. Yeah, it looks to be some resistance at the same spot. So there again there is There a is yeah. some, some kinking already, you think? Same spot, yeah. That's now you are straightening yeah, and now help. I'm, now I'm you are through. Now that bend. Yes. Actually, if you see, I have a I have a one one eight road runner guide wire that yes. is already straightening the sheet. Yeah. Now there actually there is no kink, but the problem is my I, I'm taking. Yeah, more than 360 degree rotation so you, you across all the areas. So and so, you're finding my coaxial, it difficult to withdraw. Uh, pressure is not getting transmitted. Yeah. So now at this level, I think you can my take next the, step you, will be. You can take. Since I won't have a good pressure to push the. Yeah, you can take the retention wire out now. Because sometime because at I'll this show moment, you what yeah. I don't normally do like this. What that one eight retention wire also might be. No, See. what I do is I advance here. Yeah. See, this is a right coronary that guide catheter that is going in parallelly. That is used and as a now with this I try to push it. That is a pusher catheter, like that becomes pusher. Yeah, becomes pusher for the cable. Yeah, yeah that's fine. It gives you more strength. But at the same time, I think uh, even in case this doesn't work, then the retention yeah. bar can be taken out because I think we are in a very happy position to close the defect. The, no, the, 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 the resistance is not because of the, res the wire, it is because of the multiple turns that this fellow has taken. Uh, yeah, at the same uh, time. You know, it, there, is a, there is a close to 360 degree turn on the top. Uh, but, but the wire which is inside will always, uh, uh, can always uh, do some mischief. Uh, get that guide, guiding catheter. Guiding catheter. And sometime if you still want to have a retention wire, it may be better to have a softer and a smaller wire. This is a 1-8 wire, you can have a 1-4 wire as a retention wire. Yeah, I chose the, uh, uh, this wire because of no. its ability no, to... No, this is, this is very uh, much more supportive. Stiffen this, stiffen yeah, the whole system. Yeah, much more supportive wire than 1-4. Yeah, but what I'm saying is... Once your plug is already into the deep into the sheath, you're almost in the LA. At this point in time, I don't think uh, too much of concern of uh, retentions there.
Now I am, I am actually going in closer. I have taken out the yeah. other support wire now. We are, we are, we are now. almost at the end of the sheet now. With your guiding, push your guiding, no? Yeah. So, so now I have deployed the uh, uh, atrial, I mean the left yeah, atrial so disc already. We can so see this that. is AVP2 has uh, So now I am going to deploy part of my… Three discs. So third disc, the, the distal most disc with, with two layers is opened into the LA. The second disc will be in the tract and the third will be in the… So now LA. I am coming back. Yeah, this is the second one which is uh, still partly opened. So now, now, now 3D echo starts now uh, from this point. Mm -hmm. You can start seeing the 3D. Widen it out and get the 3D. Yeah, open the 3D. Yeah, make it. Uh, yeah, that's so that now we can see the, the device on that corner. So Srija, you, you, you crop off some of the left atrium, it's too much of left atrium is there. Can we have the echo large? Yeah, echo large. Now come to uh, yeah, that's uh, right. RAO, get me, get me on profile the paravalvar leak. Come, show the previous pictures when the RA, the, the paravalvar leak, uh, the, yeah, previous, 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 previous. Go to the previous, go to the previous. I just want to see it on profile. Yeah, this view, can, we, can you come? That, the previous. Ah, this one, RAO 50, cranial 30. So this is the best view because you will Trija know. is now uh, showing the device. Yeah, get on to, get it on first, get it on first. More, more cranial. More cranial, more cranial. So we can clearly see the third disc in yeah. the free in the LA. Increase the RAO or reduce the RAO? Yeah. And uh, if you see it, it is miles away from the… Enough. Yeah. So, so the position here seems okay to me. Yeah, that looks fine. Yeah, Srija, you are, you are showing it nice. But, uh, but actually the more devices got in… Uh, into the yeah, you uh, have to take it into the tract. So yeah. I'm, I'm slightly coming out. So now the entire uh, explorer store, entire device has been deployed now. Okay, now. Srija uh, is showing a beautiful position of the left atrial disc protruding in the left atrium. Turn it Srija and show the ventricular side. Yeah, that is the ventricular disc on the ventricle. Now open the whole valve and show all the three leaflets. Cons yeah, no, okay, now this is, this is good. Now put the color on the mitral valve. Actually this is a good picture now. Oh, this looks to be perfect position. Yeah, so now uh, we are going to, the advantage of, don't worry, the advantage of this is that, you know, the, the echocardiogram has primarily guided a lot of this. So without wasting much time, I'm releasing because the longer you hold with a cable, the cable will tend to uh, pull out the device because the device does not have an inherent good strength. Yeah, it's a very soft device, it just tends so to collapse. So now I have released it, yeah. fluorostore. Yeah. So, uh, so actually, the, the, I, I think the Dr. Srija is having beautiful pictures there. The mitral valve prosthesis is seen nicely. Turn it, Srija. Uh, turn, turn the picture. She is showing the device now. She is showing the left atrial appendage as a black round dot on the top. And uh, show it from the ventricular side. Yeah, that is the ventricular side. You can see the trileaflet bioprosthesis. 
you can see the device sitting there i think it was a, it was a, it, it looks nice uh, yeah this is perfect great job done thank great you very much thank great you. case shiva dr rahul what do you feel great <laughs> as usual thank you thank you very much <laughs> we learned a lot <laughs> thank you thanks a lot i i we 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 thank the uh, uh, i i think dr rajit is ready with yes. uh, the remaining part of the case there.